Hey, everybody. This is a clip from the latest episode of The Randy Road Show. If you want the full episode, you can watch live on Free Speech TV, Dish Channel 9415, Direct TV 348, Sling, Roku, and Apple TV. The Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. Many of the marchers were families with small children. Many were elderly, overweight, or just plain tired or frail. <laughs> Trace not typically attributed to the riot prone. Many wore pro-police shirts or carried pro-police black and blue flags. Although the crowd represented a broad cross-section of Americans, mostly working class by their appearance and manner of speech, some people stood out. A very few didn't share the jovial, friendly, earnest demeanor of the great majority. Jovial. Some obviously didn't fit in, and he describes four different types of people, plainclothes militants, agents provocateurs, fake Trump protesters, and then disciplined, uniformed column of attackers. I think these are the people that uh, probably planned this. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's from yesterday. Just uh, that was Ron Johnson saying that they were crisis actors or some such crap because, you know, they were jovial is what it was. They were they were jovial. You're, you're never quite as jovial as you are when you're pummeling someone with a hockey stick or an American flag uh, flagpole. What is, you know, Ron Johnson is really just Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, you know, in the Senate is what it, this is unbelievable. So they were crisis actors, everybody, is what it is. I can't, I cannot believe he did that. And you know, that testimony that he's giving, he's reading it. He's reading it. You know where it came from? It came from a guy uh, who writes for a right-wing website. It came from a guy named J. Michael Waller. He's reading a right-wing web website uh, into the record as if it were his own words. And what he's saying is that it couldn't have been Trump supporters. It had to have been infiltrators. It had who were wearing costumes trying to pass themselves off as Trump supporters. That's quite a Hollywood production, I must say. Uh, what is that, George Soros Productions? What is that? I, of course, right? Because they didn't skimp. They did not skimp on the costumes, okay? A crisis production this size Money was no obstacle, obviously. I don't even know how many, uh, you know, what the, the bill was for craft services. That's food, everybody. That's food. So uh, the sheer number of extras that they hired, wow, that's just staggering. I mean, you don't see uh, productions this size anymore, not since Cecil beads a mill. I mean, wow, Right. So why don't they just use digital now, you know? I mean, this is how we make movies. You, they, you don't really build the monster anymore. You just um, create it digital. Maybe we should ask Ron Johnson why they didn't uh, create a digital riot. Why did they go to the expense of actually getting all these left-wingers to dress as Trump supporters? And man, you really have to be committed to your acting craft to be a left-winger who already has a Confederate flag tattoo just in case somebody calls you to pose as a Trump supporter in an insurrection on the Capitol on the day that the certification of the Electoral College is going? I mean, you really, I mean, come on. You really have to be committed to your craft or committed to a mental institution. I mean, Ron Johnson, you know, now, do you ever wonder why they don't fund mental health services? Yeah, this is why. This is why Ron Johnson needs his base. He doesn't want anybody to get therapy. And you know, he is up for re-election in the year 20 and 22. Could we just make it like our life's work? Could we just make it like a real goal to make sure that Wisconsin rejects Ron Johnson's crisis actor theory on the insurrection in the Capitol? I mean, really, because Ron Johnson is like this close to posing with assault rifles in his campaign literature, like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. How sick, how twisted is this? And by the way, they're now on a new mission in right-wing media. They have a, a twofold mission. One, to tell you that these were crisis actors. 
that were posing as Trump supporters. They were because the Trump supporters are too old and frail. According to Ron Johnson, that's what he's telling you there. They're much too old. They're much too frail to have engaged in an insurrection, to have engaged in a riot. OK. Um, and so, you know, uh, they must have been infiltrators. Now, the reason why they settled on this theory is because it is the right wing's favorite tactic to infiltrate. They did it with Black Lives Matter. And you know, nobody really uh, from the MAGA crowd, from the death cult, they really, they needed a name. They need a name. So, you know, we gave them the name of Air Force Staff Sergeant Stephen Carrillo, who, you know, murdered two police officers in Oakland, California. Remember that? Remember that? He, he, he murdered a, a Patrick Underwood. He was a, 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 a federal protective service officer. He murdered him. And then when the police went to his house, you know, to arrest him, he murdered the police, the sheriff's department uh, police officer that went to arrest him. He is a boogaloo boy, okay? And uh, that, that is who killed the cops, okay? And then his partner in crime there, Richard Justice, he turned himself in. He was charged with attempted murder. Um, and this is what they did this summer. Now we also know that uh, the fire that was set at the third precinct in Minneapolis after George Floyd died, uh, you know, because he had a knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds while a white supremacist cop uh, stood there staring down a camera. Remember that? And people were like, that's not right. We need to go to the street and we need to say something. That's not right. Well, the right-wing boogaloo boys, they saw an opportunity to infiltrate Black Lives Matter, which is what I keep telling you. Now, we know about Umbrella Man, okay? That was the guy that went to the auto zone in Minneapolis and, uh, you know, started spray painting it and breaking the windows. And when a pizza kid, a a kid with a pizza box saw this, he said, who are you? What are you doing? Because they knew that Black Lives Matter was not violent. Well, today, or actually last night, the um, uh, the, the ABC News got a a report and it said that the person who set the third precinct in Minneapolis on fire, which the right-wing media pointed to and said, see, see, they're violent, the the, the Black Lives Matter, that's not peaceful, they set their city on fire, turned out to be a boogaloo boy His name's Ivan Hunter. He's from Texas. He traveled all the way to Minneapolis. He went from Texas to Minneapolis to meet up with other members of the Boogaloo Boys with the goal of infiltrating the peaceful Black Lives Matter protests and turning them into violent riots. So what did he do? He had an AK-47, you know, because Ron Johnson says these are unarmed protests. He had an AK-47 and he shot 13 rounds of his assault style uh, rifle into the Minneapolis Police Department 3rd Precinct and set it ablaze. He set it on fire. But they were carrying Blue Lives Matter flags. Yes, but you have to understand criminals don't like cops, okay? Oh, it's like that scene in True Romance. At the end, I got to tell you something, boss. I hate cops. <laughs> the security guy. <laughs> Officer Dimes. Officer Dimes. Why does he know your name? Why does he know your name, Elliot? <laughs> I mean, this is like a bad, it is a bad, but I mean, honestly, this is crazy. Ron Johnson reading a right-wing website into the congressional record as if it's his own in order to, I don't know, I mean, they were jovial when they was hang Mike Pence. They were, they were jovial. They were, in, they were in a holiday cheer spirit type mindset. I don't, so hang Mike Pence, what is that, a Christmas song that I never heard of because I'm a Jew? Is that what it is? <laughs> Holy crap. Hey, everybody. This is a clip from the latest episode of The Randy Road Show. If you want the full episode, you can watch live on Free Speech TV, Dish Channel 9415, DirecTV 348, Sling, Roku, and Apple TV.